This 1958 cent now holds a new world record. You'll have all the information you require regarding this coin. The United States Mint produced a significant number of these pennies for circulation since we are about to get directly into this film. Both the Denver and Philadelphia Mints produced these coins. On the obverse or front of each coin is the mint mark. You'll either see a D mint mark below the date, which stands for the Denver Mint, or a no mint mark, which indicates for the Philadelphia Mint. Now, the supply and demand of coins will depend on who is collecting them and how many coins were made at each mint. Right now, the majority of these coins won't be worth much, but what you should be looking for is a characteristic that will often be very little, but greatly increase the coin's value. The price of this coin was $1,136,250. Great collections are now selling it at auction. On January 22nd, 2023, it was sold. Now consider that a coin like this one might one day be worth a great deal more. If you found this coin, you may use it to retire. Here, we need to establish some realistic viewpoints. Finding a coin like this is extremely unlikely, but if you do, you must take the necessary steps to ensure its safety. You will never be defrauded. Why then did it sell at such a high price? This is the first time it has ever been offered for sale and is one of only three specimens known to exist. This is a two-fold die obverse coin, as coin collectors refer to it. Obverse refers to the front of the coin and reverse refers to the back. Now, if you look at Liberty over there on the left and In God We Trust over there, you will notice some pretty drastic doubling going on. You're in for a big treat when you pair that with a mint. State 65 red with an extraordinarily high grade. What does the word red mean? These coins can be found in a range of hues, including red, brown, and depending on the metal it was struck against at the time and the environment it was stored in, it can be brown. The coin will rust and change color due to environmental factors. Here is a brief illustration. Red coins usually fetch a higher price than red, brown, and brown coins. However, this isn't always the case. Keep a lookout for this coin because, as I said before, it may easily put you in retirement. Our Coin and Currency Mastermind program is now available if you want to ensure that you never again doubt the value of your coins or bills. Along with a group of like-minded people, you will interact directly with our team and receive all the answers to the questions you have ever had. People. Now to learn more, click the video you're currently seeing on the screen. Come on in and we'll see you inside. 1963. Jefferson Nicola circulated a presentation on uses. Very fine condition, with very lightly braided surfaces and sharply detailed device elements. As you can see, the river's nickel content causes it to reflect light even though it has lost its original mint luster. Numerous significant contact marks are visible, particularly on the Monticello structure and this small notch. I am unable to determine if the damage is due to posting damage or dye deterioration. There are a few partially visible steps, but they are mainly flat. The 1963 P. Jefferson nickel is still in circulation and is quite common. Nonetheless, the majority of coins in use range in grade from poorly circulated to roughly Miss 63. There are very few condition examples in Miss 67, with less than a small number acknowledged as superior. Today, full steps variants at mid-state 67 are valued at more than $4,000. This top-grade 1963 nickel at mid-state 67 has complete steps, making it a common date in most circumstances. The 1963 Jefferson nickel is extremely rare, fully step sharp, and in certified super gem condition. The bolt design elements, satini nickel grade luster, and registry grade coin display. The loop, which was sold at Heritage Auctions on January 13th, 2022 for dollar 3600, only shows the tiniest races. 1960s vintage Jefferson nickels are hard to find in complete steps. Not only is the 1963D one of the harder dates with full steps characteristics in any condition, but it is also an exception. This has an FS designation and is 1963D 5 cents. Radiant gem with outstanding visual appeal for both kinds of designs. Light gold tones with slightly reflective fields are present on both sides. 1961, Roosevelt dime in mid-state 67 plus with full bands. According to NGC, starting this year and lasting through the early years of clad coinage, mintages rose dramatically in response to a growing shortage of coins. It ultimately turned out that there were enough coins to go around. 
but they were not being returned to circulation in a timely manner by coin-operated businesses. 1961. Dimes were hoarded in bad quantities, though a certain percentage of these pieces were melted during periods when their bullion value greatly exceeded their numismatic value. Certified examples are plentiful through Miss 67, but examples having full torch or full bands details are in very short supply. This tone specimen was sold for $5,006.25 with buyer's fee, number 3, 1983 Roosevelt dime with missing mint mark S, graded as proof 70 deep cameo by PCGS in numismatics. The S mint mark indicates that a coin was struck at the San Francisco mint. In the case of the 1983 no S Roosevelt dime, the error occurred when a batch of dimes was minted without the mint mark. Contrary to the normal production process, the absence of the S mint mark on the 1983 dimes was unintentional and resulted from an error in the minting process. This absolute numismatic pinnacle and highest achievable grade ended up selling for $10,560. Number 2, 1949, Roosevelt dime in Miss 68 condition with full bands. The obverse is painted in rich bands of colorful iridescence that intensify at the right border, showing a blend of teal, violet, and magenta hues. The reverse remains virtually brilliant save for a slight dusting of olive patent. A visible underscrutiny, perfectly executed and essentially untouched, the present piece simply cannot be improved upon. It was sold for $13,200, number 1, 1942 Mercury Dime, and PR69 condition, according to NGC. As with all Philadelphia mint dimes from the war years, the 1942P issue typically falls short of the full band's designation. On the plus side, so many of this issue were coined and preserved in rolls that collectors should have no trouble finding a suitable specimen for such a high mintage, issue 1942. Dimes are seemingly devoid of double dyes with one notable exception. A dual hubbed over date is among the most obvious such varieties in numismatics, and this merits a separate entry of its own following this one. This highly elusive specimen ended up selling for $98,437.50 with buyer's fee. So that wraps up today's episode. We hope you will consider subscribing to our channel in order to see more interesting numeric content. Remember to give it a huge thumbs up. Be careful.